Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Dave Cooper, and I am a professor at Beihang University. I teach video game design. Uh, I am also a founder of the startup Player. And what I want to talk to you about today is that I don't want you to work, I want you to play. Play is clearly a lot more fun than work, right? No, everyone disagrees with me. Is play more fun than work? Yes. Good, good. That's what I want to hear, okay? Now, what I want to do is ask you a question, okay? Why? Why are games fun? Anybody? You get a reward. You get a reward? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Oh. Yeah, that's a hand. Um, games are more engaging than work. Games are more engaging? Yeah. I think it's less obligatory. Less obligation? Okay, yeah, I like that. I agree. Less obligation. What happens when you play a game immediately? You said someone gave me a reward, right? You get feedback. And what do you want? You want to get more of that feedback, right? Why? What, what, what gives you that feeling? What's the fun feeling from? It's because you're learning to play. The learning that you experience in a video game is what the key thing that gives you the fun. What Chris Crawford said in the first ever video, video game design, uh, the first Austin game conference was, fun is the emotional response to learning. And I thoroughly agree with him on that. And I want to show you a very brief example of why I think that's true, OK? I want to take you on a ride to this screen here and take you back to a video game that you may have seen before. Does anyone know this game? This is the first ever, or at least this is a copy of, the first ever su commercially successful video game Pong. So I'm going to play this as if it's the first time I've ever played this video game right now, and I'm going to try and explain my feelings while I'm playing that game. What is this? Oh. Uh, that thing's moving. It's scoring points. I want to score points. How do I make it score points? I can't. Oh, oh, I'm moving it up and down. That's cool. Right, I, I'm going to catch points. Right, yeah, if I get the ball on there, then it doesn't score points. OK. Moves fast. I got it past. Oh, oh. I, oh, I got it on the end? No, the middle, the middle. What happens? Oh, if I get it on the end, that's, that makes it harder for him. It's harder for him, better for me. It's hard to get it on the edge, though. Oh, shit, I tried to kiss me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to do it more. I'm immediately feeling, oh, damn it. Oh, come on. Come oh, on, I can beat you, I can beat you. Oh, no. OK, so I didn't beat Pong, OK? But what I did do is I learned how to play it very, very, very fast. Yeah? OK, yes, I've played the game before, as many of you have. But the reason that was such a successful game was because it immediately gave everyone instant feedback and was fun. And that feedback led to, on the very first day, the machine breaking down. And it broke down because it was full of quarters, because they couldn't fit anymore in the box, OK? And that's because of instant feedback. That's what I'm claiming for you. OK, I'm going to switch back to my presentation. Um, and I believe that feedback is critical to learning. If your feedback is slow, what happens? What happens if you, if you don't learn? If, if I've moved that paddle and nothing happened, if it didn't change the state, how would I feel? I'd feel frustrated, right? I'd feel angry that things weren't going my way. It's like when collisions don't happen in a video game that you expect to happen, you feel frustration because the feedback isn't right, yeah? Feedback's important. Now, if, um, if your feedback is instant, that's faster learning in my book. And fast feedback leads to more fun. But doing game development and doing development in, hard, in, in general is hard. OK? This is not an atypical development screen. Many windows open, lots of code. How many hands up in the air? Who's a developer here? OK, so there's a bunch of you that have seen screens like this before. The rest of you probably see these screens when? In a movie? Or like when you're looking over your partner's shoulder or something? Yeah? And to me, I don't know the language that they're currently coding in here. And for everyone else, it's too small to read anyway. And the reality is, it takes time, no matter who you are, 
to learn this stuff, time that doesn't give you very fast feedback, right? When you're writing code, what happens? You write the code, what do you do after you've written it? You test it. Before you test it, what do you do? You compile it, right? You compile it, maybe, maybe. But you run it, you test it. But as soon as you've written a line of code, what happens? Nothing, right? You write a line of code, then you save the line of code. Then you write more lines of code. Eventually, you put them together with all the other lines of code, compile them up. Hopefully, you then deploy them and send them out to your customers. This is what I think the current model looks like. You begin with a designer. The designer designs a nice game, let's say. The designer then sends the design to a coder, and hopefully they have some conversation. And that guy starts writing code in that beautiful, beautiful sets of blocks. Then we locally test that after compilation and various other steps. And then when we find problems, we start debugging those. Those may go back to a designer. They may go straight to the coder. It doesn't really matter. The fact is that we keep going around this loop until we've got something that we feel is ready for the customer. Then we send that out. And I'm talking about mobile apps here particularly. We send that out to try and get it in the App Store. Now, our App Stores of Google and Apple have varying times of response, uh, days or weeks kind of uh, length of time. This is time that could be spent having feedback. We haven't gotten any feedback that's long and meaningful enough. But now we've got to get our users to download the game for the first time. Or if they've already got it, we now have to get them to update the game. OK? And convincing users to update things, update software that already works? Why would I bother? It's already on my phone. It might break if I update this. It might not come from a reputable source. It's hard to convince them. Eventually, the user gets the game and tests it and plays it and goes, yay! Finds a bug and says, there's a bug. And now we have to do the whole thing again, right? What if this looked like this? You just design or write the code. One or the other. Both is fine. Then you test the code and you debug it. And the whole time, all of that is live on your phone, on your iPad, on every device that it's installed on. You don't need to do all of the updates with uh, past the initial, the initial send it out to the customer. Once it's there, they have all your updates. Would that be cool? Yeah. yeah. I said, would that be cool? Yeah. I think that would be pretty cool, OK? Um, and if, I, if it's not cool, maybe I'm at the wrong talk. Um, so what I wanted to do was show you, we try and make game design and development easy. This is a beta mock-up of uh, what we're working on. And rather than just showing you the static slide, what I want to try and do is I want to try and show you um, an actual game that we're, that, that we're uh, testing out now. Um, I've got it here on the, uh, on the iPad. I've got uh, this World of Fighters bar camp game that I'm trying to you know, I can't stand it somewhere sensible, can I? That doesn't, does that, does that stay up there? Yeah, OK. And then I'm going to switch to Pong for a second, get Pong off the screen, and hopefully, in connection, we'll load up our video game. And hopefully, all the other windows will also load. There we go. Beautiful. So now what we have is our editors for all of these visible. The game that we see on the screen here is the same game that we see on the screen right here. Now, we're relying on the Wi-Fi in this building, which some of you may know is a little bit uh, sluggish. But one of the beautiful things that you can do with our interface, if you look at there, this is just our user interface for the start of the game. What if we decided that, that this was in the wrong place and we wanted this down here? Now, here's the live game. If I just click off that, we just have to wait a moment while it goes up to the server and comes back down. And then there the game is live there. The question is, has it worked, on the, has it worked here? No, not yet. The internet doesn't appear to be uh, behaving itself on the, on, the, on the iPad as well. But nevertheless, this is what we're talking about. It will work across all these devices given a, given a, stable, given a stable internet connection. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and show you the, the logo I prepared earlier. Because of course, like World of Fighters, 
done in BarCamp should probably be a BarCamp logo, right? That would make more sense. So, we just switch that out to a World of Bi Fighters BarCamp logo. Okie dokie, and then that should now pan across. We see it change here, and now we have that just as easily. But what if you could do that in the middle of a game, okay? So in the middle of playing a game, it's all very well mucking around with like, uh, like title menus and stuff. But let's, let's pick a character. Let's pick one that doesn't look like Justin Bieber. Um, and we'll go into an online battle. And in that online battle, I'm now gonna bring up. I'm gonna bring up the scene editor, which was here. That's the one that's missing. And Sorry. No, this this product that we're we're working on is all open source. If you want to fork it, it's on GitHub right now. Um, it's an open beta. Anyone can play with this. Um, uh, anyone can play with this right now. You just need to go to player.com, and then you can start mucking around with your own copies of the games. And hopefully, the internet works more to your favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I was going to show you there is live editing of a map in real time. Um, I think we're not going to manage to get the, the net to behave itself. But anyone that wants to see uh, a, lar a more small scale, scale demo afterwards, I'm going to be sitting on some chairs just outside. And uh, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, I'll show you the demo on phones and on tablet. And if you have a device, you can install it yourself and try it out live right here. OK, so back to the, back to the presentation. Um, what we feel that we have is a way to provide simple drag and drop interfaces so that anyone can build games. We have templates that are already there for your games. We have a shooter template. We have a fighter template. That was the one that we were just looking at. We have a racing game template. Up and coming, we also have um, a camel racing game, a flying simulator, and an RPG game, you know, hack and slash kind of thing. And we give you those as complete games. Then you take them, you drag drop your own models in there, your own textures in there. If you're creative of any type, you can just drag your own stuff in there without having to write any code, and it will run. We're going to add behaviors in there that you can drag drop in onto things. And if you want to learn to code, you start typing a line of code. And what happens in the code editor on screen, you type that line of code, and immediately that code is applied to the screen. You can change the camera angle just by changing the code, and everybody's device now changes the camera angle and looks in a different direction. You can do this anywhere, on any device, on an iPad, an Android. And if you've got a smart fridge that runs JavaScript, you can put it on your fridge. Um, it's open source. And we're going to provide meaningful gamified tutorials. That means that you will learn and stay focused, because we will give you feedback that you need and fast. Who are we? We're five, we've got 500 beta testers, four games currently released outside of the player app itself. There are the standalone apps themselves, um, shooting games and fighting games. Currently, we are up to 600 unlocks a month, 40,000 users of our tool, 2 million games played to date. Um, two million and two. Now that we've just done that, um, we've just graduated from Mozilla's Web Forward. We presented at SIGGRAPH 2013 this year, and we're partnering with Intel, doing some very, very cool motion capture software, uh, grabbing your own face and putting it into a video game as a 3D model. That's pretty fun. Um, we were featured in New Scientist earlier this year. We're in London. We're in China. We're in Spain. We're global. And what we want. It's to raise capital for business to business and also business to customer. If you think what we did today is cool and you want to be part of this, come on our Kickstarter and pledge some support. 
even if it's just one pound, just to say that you like this. The more people we have behind this, the more other people will look and get to support us. And supporting us is supporting you because you will be the, the, the people receiving this. Because every code that we write goes back to the open source community. OK? Um, we're trying to think big. We want to be the next Adobe in five years' time. And we want to say, don't work. Get instant feedback. Just play. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. How much are you raising? Um, for VC? Yes. Uh, we're looking for 500,000 US dollars at the moment to take us on an 18 month uh, runway, full time, five empl six employees, uh, which will bring us to a saleable set of products. Yeah. Yeah. What my users have coded in the games or any other tools help? Um, all, the, all of this is actually JavaScript. It's running Node.js in the background uh, on MongoDB uh, background. And um, so you can run it on any browser in, in JavaScript. And basically, we provide the framework that sits behind it. On each native device, we've written a, a custom uh, native, native piece of code that then interprets and presents the, the JavaScript and uses WebGL. Because currently, you can't do that on a native device. Because on the iPhone and on Android, WebGL is either disabled or buggy. Any other questions? Second question. The second question is, um, how do you, you, you're living over here. Like, are the rest of the employees at this company over here, and are you working in a collaborative room remotely? Um, so the question is, are we, are we collaborating remotely or are we, are we independent? So I'm in, I'm in Beijing. There's four members in London and one in Spain. And we currently work um, remotely, although there is a chance in the future that um, either we will scale up here or we will scale up in one of those locations and merge. At the moment, that's, that's, that's unset. But at the moment, it's all remote. Any more questions? Yes. Have there been any outside contributors? Have there been any outside contributors to the open source project? At the moment, uh, we haven't got we haven't got uh, large meaningful uh, input from the from the community. But that's one of the things that we really want. So if any of you guys feel feel like getting involved, that's one of the other things we really want to take away from this. Yes. The way I see something like this working well is through that corporate um, sales. I'd like you to see the chocolate bar cap mobile in two seconds. Yes. How do you guys feel about this direction? And are you intending on having it go that kind of corporate way, corporate branding? That's, that's a very good question. So the question is, are we interested in or able to do corporate branding? And yes, that's one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the, the sales points that we are actively looking at at the moment and talking with companies including Unilever in Shanghai uh, with regards to branding videos and products using this. Because we can, we can take any of our stuff. We can, we can, get, a, we can get that Bieber-like character, and suddenly he's wearing a bar camp t-shirt, a bar camp hat, or whatever, on everyone's device at any time. So yes. Yeah. Um, is there a way to create utility in other kinds of environments? So, for example, uh, not necessarily games, but to enhance many things that you're doing at work through generating feedback mechanisms uh, by inputting data or something like that. Absolutely. Um, so the question is, can we can we use this? Can we use so that can we use this to finish to um, to provide feedback mechanisms in other in other fields and areas? And the answer is yes. We can use this to make A-B testing possible. We can use this to make uh, feedback in anything whereby it's a, a games, uh, sorry, if any program that wants quick feedback, any video tool that wants quick feedback. If you put this logic into that, it can be applied there. Currently, we're not doing it, but it's on our roadmap. Thank you very much. I've been Dave Cooper with Player. See you next time.